In this video, I'm gonna share how gymnasts and gymnastics coaches can help increase the number of sticks they get during meets and training and competition, but also make sure that we're keeping the athletes as safe as possible, okay? It's super important to make sure we're landing the right way, we're getting really strong legs, and we're training the proper way to actually land because it's not only gonna help increase sticks, increase scores, it's also gonna help reduce the risk of injury. So before we dive into the video and share all the exercises, we wanna make sure a couple of things happen. So one is we're in the brand new process of a giveaway. So last week we had a great winner who got an awesome some prize of a uh, free set of symposium tickets, but also a free month at the Hero Lab. And we have our last kind of block of giveaways going on right now. So drop in the comment section, put on hashtag 24 shift. And if you do that, you'll be automatically entered to win another set of shift symposium tickets, but even bigger prize, we're going to give you away a free course of your choice alongside that as well. So an epic $500 value on top of the $500 ticket uh, price symposium as well. So also if you're first time here in a while, make sure you like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, because that helps you know when the new videos come out to put in that hashtag 24 shift for the giveaway, but also it helps get you the new information as soon as it's kind of put out. So let's dive into the video and share some of what we're going on to. Okay, so the first thing we have to do here when we teach somebody how to land, it's actually understand the basic way to land in a proper way. Okay, so toe ball heel landing drills are really my preferred way to do this. So a toe ball heel landing mimics actually hitting the floor from this kind of landing position, right? So if someone does a back tuck or a front tuck where they jump off a box or whatever, just an athlete who wants to work on sticking more properly and saving their knee risk. Okay, you want to start from the balls of your toes when you hit that initial ground contact with your hips kind of open and you want to slowly shift your weight into your uh, the balls of your feet and then drop down into your heels and drop into a proper squat. So we're kind of mimicking this here, right? So pushing up on the balls of your toes, snapping down and kind of just working on that landing position. So you can see Jen is kind of doing a couple up and down, snapping down real fast. So this is obviously not the most explosive thing, but it just really helps to set the foundation for how someone is going to learn how to do this properly. Okay. Then of course you want to do this with a single leg as well. So these are very easy to add into a warm up. We just do five of the double leg ones, five of the single leg ones on each side. And an athlete, especially a younger athlete, can really set the foundation of how to land properly and protect themselves against the really high forces. But also, as we teach some athletes how to dissipate the forces in a squat using their hamstrings and their glutes and their quads, this will increase the chance that they can stick. Okay, Proper squatting formed in a squat position is the best way to really absorb those forces and not have to move when you land a dismount or a tumbling pass or some sort of beam stick or high bar bars or whatever. So we're going to do these every single day if we can in training up to five, six times per week. Obviously, they are very low uh, stress on the body, but the things we want to really look out for, right, is number one, too loud, okay? So the, the land quietly cue helps somebody really sit into their hips and absorb the muscular forces. That's what we really want instead of the joint-based forces. So ACL tears, meniscus tears, things like that. They happen when somebody puts all the pressure on their quads and on their knee joints themselves, and the body can't handle that, and the force goes through the ligaments or through the meniscus, okay? So we don't want that to happen. And that goes along with the second thing is we don't want to see the knees cave in. You can see when Jen, Jen lands here, she's doing a really good job of keeping the toe in line with the knee in line with the hip. That's what we want. That's that proper force dispersion, right? We don't want to see the knees coming in towards each other, that knock knees or what's called the genu valgus. We don't want that because that kind of puts more pressure or risk on the knee joint itself, okay? And the other thing we see is it actually happens a little bit here. As you can see, Jen has slightly shifted her weight over her left leg. Ideally, the trunk is right in the middle. We don't want to lean from side to side, okay? And this kind of sometimes becomes more pronounced when somebody does it on a single leg because it's much harder. You can see that when Jen lands a little bit, she's still working on trying to keep that chest over her body weight. She has a little bit of a tip there. So we'd like to see that torso a little bit more upright and the knee kind of straight underneath the hip, but very challenging to do. And it's something that we work on. Okay. So that's a nice, easy uh, kind of introductory drill you can do every single day. The second thing we want to do here is we want to start to actually add the differentiator between punching and sticking. Okay. So in gymnastics, punching on the floor or punching on the springboard or punching on some of the actual plyometric work is super important. We want someone to know how to be elastic and how to rebound and how to kind of store energy in more of a stiff and rigid position, okay? That's a different skill set though than landing properly, okay? So I always have to teach athletes, okay, this is how you punch, this is how you hit the springboard, this is how you hit the floor, this is how you hit the beam, this is how you, uh, you know, punch off the actual plyometric surface versus this is how you stick, okay? So this drill puts these two together. So you can use hurdles, you can use panel mats, you can just use, you know, on the beam itself. But essentially we wanna do a series of punches and then a stick, okay? So we wanna have someone do very fast springy kind of punches with a relatively stiff knee and a nice toe point, then they want to land and absorb their forces at the end. So 
I like doing three to five uh, repetitions of either a panel mat or hurdles or, you know, punching off a springboard and sticking, like maybe two or three uh, jumps on a tumble track then sticking as well. Sometimes you can do those with like punch fronts or, uh, you know, snap down back, handspring back tucks. We'll talk about those later. But I think for the beginning introduction, just teaching like, oh, this is how you punch, this is how you stick, two different skill sets that you're gonna need to kind of learn and master as a young athlete. So first kind of error we see is someone's not snappy enough on the punch, right? They're not really doing that quick, quick twitch that we have. And they also sometimes don't have a good ankle push. I wanna see you push all the way through that foot and really bounce and get a nice, a powerful elastic toe point. And then the other things that we see the arms kind of lag behind, right? If the arms are lagging behind, the arms are not in a good position, you can't get them in front when you actually land properly and absorb that in a squat. So we wanna make sure someone's snappy. We wanna make sure someone's doing a really, really good punch. Then they have a nice solid stick kind of with that toe ball heel landing drill combined in that first thing that we just did. So two to three sets, three to five reps is pretty good. A couple times a week is really all you need here. All right, and then kind of moving on to here. Now, the thing about gymnastics we wanna to start to train is that the vertical forces of landing are enormous, okay? Up to 15 to 18 times body weight. So we have to start mimicking drills that kind of put those two positions together, right? So we're building on top of each other. We wanna build them in toe ball heel landing. We wanna build on some of that punching versus that landing. And we also wanna build on those high vertical forces that come on dismounts and sticking. So a depth drop here is Heather's gonna step off, do a big rebound, and then a stick, okay? And you can see that this is actually something we wanna work on because you can see Heather has a little bit of that knee cave when she lands here you can see that right knee just comes in ever so slightly like the knees come together and then she's jumping out of it so that's something we want to work on right we want to cue that in a mirror we want to cue that in some sort of a feedback loop but she does a really good job of landing in a great position right when she lands here you can see she lands really well those knees stay in a nice line so for her it's about being consciously aware of that punching mechanics to make sure that she's kind of getting herself to a proper position and then she's kind of going all the way up and down, right? Obviously in gymnastics, her feet would be together, but we still wanna worry about those knees moving side to side. So depth drops are a really great way to do this. You can do a depth drop vertical jump, which is what she's doing here. You can also do a depth drop horizontal jump or a broad jump. So drop down and jump as far as you can out. I just think that vertical jumps have a little bit more transference over to gymnastics for this kind of particular focus. So I kind of like five repetitions, maybe two to three sets of very fast one second pop off the ground. And then I like doing these one to two times per week, okay? So we talked about the knees caving in, kind of, but a couple other things we want to worry about. One is not having tension when you hit the ground, when you're in the air. So when she jumps high in that second phase there, we really want to make sure there's maximal effort, right? Maximal hip extension, really squeezing the glutes, fire the quads, point the toes, arms are up, right? Maximal body tension is really, really important, which goes to the second thing is that we don't want to see the pit, uh, pike in the hips. We want to see the hips completely open and flat because that means that the glutes are, muscling really, are working really, really hard. And we also want to make sure someone has that stick at the bottom just like that, okay? So just three errors to work on really great drill to help kind of start to progress things from just the basic landing to that plyo and stick and kind of putting it all together for more of a gymnastic specific drill. All right, and then moving on to some of these things is I wanna make sure we're always doing some single leg jumping series, okay? So obviously in gymnastics, a lot of stuff looks like it happens on two legs, but in reality, someone's leaning towards one side, they're kind of doing something on one leg. So we wanna make sure we're training somebody to do these single leg drills all together. So we have a, a double leg a depth drop we did, but this is a really great progression. We can do the exact same thing, but with a single leg. So Jen is doing a single leg vertical jump and then a single leg forward jump. And it starts to teach the athlete how to work very quick and in multiple different uh, scenarios right so jumping up and then jumping forward and a stick jumping up jumping forward and then a stick okay up and then forward and we're still trying to do all the things we talked about we want the hip to be in line with the knee and the ankle we want that plyometric jump combined with the stick right we want to make sure that the hips are not kind of out of line with the trunk all those things are really really important okay so five sets on or sorry five reps on each leg okay two sets so back and forth maybe two times i really like that five second per rep so i consider one lap all the way down of one rep so we want to make sure someone's moving quickly through that and then again the errors are very similar to what we talked about. So they're going a little bit too fast on that stick. The knees are caving in or they're doing that stiff kind of rigidness when they should be doing a nice landing proper pattern. They're doing more of the stiff kind of force absorption on their kneecaps. Okay. So make sure it's punching on one side and sticking on the other side. That's kind of what we want. And then lastly, to wrap this up, is we have to make sure at some point this actually transfers over to gymnastics. And so my favorite drill for this is just doing some snap down panel mat type work, right? So kind of stepping off a panel mat here and then doing that kind of nice stiff punch jump, which we talked about, it's very gymnastic specific, and then kind of going through and doing a nice front tuck and finding that landing position, okay? So there are a couple options you can do here. This is the forward version. So you have someone step off and do a front tuck. I also like doing a snap down back handspring back tuck. If someone's younger and is just starting out here, you don't have to start with front tucks and back tucks. You can just do punch 
punch, punch, punch stick, right? You can do snap down, rebound back up to the panel mat stick. There's many options kind of going on to different things that people need, but I want to show this one because it really illustrates well the differentiation between this gymnastic specific punching that we see here and then this kind of landing position here, right? Very, very different of what this is doing versus what this is doing. So try to make sure it's a punch versus a stick, right? And this drill really does a good job of combining both, which is why I showed it. But same kind of things apply, right? We want to make sure the core is braced the entire time. We don't want to see the hips being piked right as they take off the floor. You see how there's got a little bit of a forward chest lean, but generally the hips are supposed to be open and punching off the ground. And then we don't want to see only the hips doing the work. I want to see her absorb the landing and her, her ankles, her knees, and slowly sit into that squat right here, right? Every muscle is working really hard versus if you have someone who's not landing properly with the knees apart or the hips being in a squat pattern, they do all the work with the joints, right? They do all the joints with the knee joints and the hip joints. We want the whole body to work. We want the core to be braced and kind of spread that bend out across the entire way. So all these drills can be added in throughout the week. I really love that toe ball heel landing one in the warm up, but all these other ones, maybe one or two times per week, just pick one per day, do five or 10 in a warm up, do it as a beam warm up game, do it as a, a bar drill or a parallel bar, or a high bar stick game, that's fine too as well. But you have to be working on this every single day if you wanna see this kind of become automatic and subconscious and help the athletes learn how to protect themselves, but also get in the habit of sticking properly every time. So if you're a gymnastics coach and you work in any way, shape or form, you wanna learn about the best leg strength, leg power, plyometrics, sticking drills, vault bars, beam floor, make sure you jump on over and check out the 2023 shift symposium we are quickly closing in the window of when tickets will not longer be available so if you want to make sure you secure these tickets just head over to shiftmovementscience.com backslash 2023 shift symposium and you can sign up and check out all those things we have one day two day three day bundles you can get just the day that you want you can record uh you know see the recordings of lectures you'll have every handout every lecture every q a session will be bundled and uploaded after the weekend is live so if you miss one or two lectures you want to come back later or rewatch and take notes after the fact and just watch that's totally fine but have a massive amount of people who are signed up right now and are really looking forward to making this an excellent weekend in June. So make sure you check out those tickets. But if not, if you just enjoyed this video and you want to just kind of hang out with us on the YouTube channel, that's too cool as well. So try to make sure that you kind of go down there and hit the 24 shift. So hashtag 24 shift. That's going to be your entry into win symposium tickets and a free course of your choosing should you win. And then also we're going to go down there and make sure you hit the like button, the subscribe button, the notification bell, because that is going to be how you can make sure you see all the new content when it comes out, have more chances to win giveaways, and also just get to update all the content. So hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.